Corner Cafe. I am your host, Rachel Maines, and Jamie Daniel. He has the night off, but we're going to have a great show. Um, first of all, I just want to encourage us. You know, I actually do believe this is going to be a good year, and the reason it's going to be a good year is because we set our hearts towards Christ. I love new things. I love the new year because of all the, the goals, and we can kind of start over and kind of renew things. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. Second Corinthians 517, one of my favorites, but one of my goals this year is to read a chapter in the Bible each day. So in the mornings I read and in the evenings I read, and I was thinking to myself, if I keep this up. Every day, pretty soon here, I'm going to have read the entire New Testament. And then from there, I can go and read the Old Testament. So I encourage you guys, listeners, to also read the Bible every day. And perhaps you are going to do like me and just read a chapter. That would be great. Join me in the journey. Well, we're going to have a great show. We have a featured guest, Julia Gentry, and she is encouraging folks to dream better big and she has a conference coming up also we're going to play music music that inspires us music um, to set our hearts anew and to celebrate our lord so we're going to go to a break we'll be back stay tuned love love is patient love is kind it does not envy it does not boast it is not proud it is not rude it is not self-seeking It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. In the book of Job, we read about a man whose faith is put to the ultimate test. Job is struck with physical pain and ultimately loses everything, including his family. Yet his faith remains strong. How are you doing today with tests of your faith? Things that make you go, hmm, your Crawford Broadcasting Company, God and Country Station. And welcome back to Corner Cafe. And I love the new year. And I have a new friend, Julia Gentry, with me. We're going to talk about her event, Dare to Dream. How fun. Welcome to Corner Cafe. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yes. So um, you did live in Denver and now you moved. And remind me where you're living right now. We're in Bend, Oregon. Fun. Wow. But you were in Denver for some time. Um, What made you decide to, well, write this amazing book and um, encourage people to dream? Oh, man. How long do we have? (laughs) (laughs) Right. We'll have you back on the future, too. A future show. (laughs) So good. Yes. You know, for, for me, my journey started after accomplishing the American dream. Okay. Right. Like my husband and I had built what we thought was a successful career. We had bought the house and the car and we had the 2.5 kids. And, you know, we really did all the things that you should do to be, quote unquote, successful and to feel fulfilled. And yet we found ourselves every night, Rachel, crawling into bed, asking one simple yet profound question, which is, 
is there something more? Mm. And that led us on a journey that we didn't know was going to lead us to many years and a book leader and moving across the country. And But for me and my husband, that was what we called our midlife awakening. Ooh. So instead of just getting a tattoo or buying a car, we sold everything and started traveling the country in an RV, which is also when I started writing the book, Dream My Dear You. Wow, I love that. And I love the stories where it's not like your cookie cutter life and people take risks and you realize, you know, sometimes we can feel like we're in, especially the American dream, we can feel like we're in the rat race. So you guys kind of felt that rat race feeling then? Yeah, I mean, at some level, I think all of us have asked that question. You know, I think it might look different for everyone. But when you start to kind of feel like, man, I'm successful, but not fulfilled, or you're asking questions about like, is there something more? Or I know that I was made for more, right? Or God, what else do you have for me? Or even, you know, Rachel, we we love the end of a new year and the beginning of a new year, but we're kind of looking at a really big chasm of going, what's what's going on, right, as a global society and as a local society? And I think it just has a lot of people asking bigger questions. But, you know, to be totally honest, I didn't write this book because I stand before you today living the dream, right, and saying, oh, my gosh, this is awesome, and everybody should be doing this, and everybody needs to live your dream. I wrote this book because the journey was really hard. Hmm. It's really hard. And I just didn't feel like there was a book out there that actually gave people the tools to bridge the gap, to speak to the hard, to to learn how to do the hard well. And so this journey isn't just, or this book isn't just about the, the destination of dreaming. It's about walking people through a journey of dreaming. Right. I love that. So what's, um, I guess, the a couple tips of the book um, to kind of, because it sounds like you're uh, revamping, retweaking the idea of dreaming, especially in yeah. like the American dream. So what are a couple tips that you really um, expand on in the book? Yeah, I think two things, because again, what most people say is reading this book, it's not what I thought. <laughs> and And so... The two great great takeaways is, number one, you read this book and you start to identify what's actually stopping you. And it's not what we think it is. You know, a lot of us go, well, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. You don't know who I'm married to. Have you looked at the economy? Right. Right? And so we start to really blame a lot of things around us. But this book helps you to identify what your actual limiting beliefs are that stop you from living your dream out. And then the second thing is, is that it actually puts you back in the driver's seat of your own world to kind of look at, hey, I do see some of the problems going on around me. I do see this world not functioning to the best of its ability. But what if I didn't actually have to build from the external world in, but actually from the internal world out? So it gets you looking at a much deeper level um, and taking responsibility for what we're here to do on this planet, which is to dream. Like the world is waiting for us to dream. And so it really positions you to be able to do that. Right. I love that. And you are a Christian, of course, so you have a Christian perspective. But it sounds like it's going to reach others, too, um, with the hope of coming to Christ and realizing the author of dreams is the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is beautiful. I love that. Now, um, I think it's interesting that, you know, in our society, we're kind of trained, okay, this is the path you go, school, college, um, then, you know, you're doing your dream job after that, you're shortly after that meeting your spouse, and then you have the white picket fence and a home with kids, two, two is typical, like, you know, so... In this book, you're challenging that narrative, even because you're married and you're a wife, but you're challenging the narrative of, hey, let's get out of this rat race. Let's dream big. Let's give the Lord our dreams and see what he does with them. And most likely it's going to um, totally rock our world in a sense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think what, what happens for a lot of us, Rachel, is, is, you know, I use the analogy of Peter before he walked on water, right? I yeah. think that a lot of us forget that. Jesus did not force Peter to get out of the boat. Right. That was on Peter. Peter, you got to get out of the boat, right? And some of us, I would say, we have to get out of the boat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we have got to trust that we that our dreams are God-given. We have to trust that it, it's been put in us by heaven, that he's going to give us the resources and the tools and the people to walk this thing out. Right. But then there's a, there's a large majority of us that once we get out of the boat, 
and we start to go, yeah, but my dreams feel bigger than me, or there's a lot of risk here, or nobody's ever done this, or I don't know how to do this, or what if I lose money, or what if people don't love me anymore, or what if I fail? Yeah. Are your eyes on Jesus? Right. Are your dreams on where you're going? Right. right. Are is your focus on 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 yesterday? Or on tomorrow. Right. Right. And so some of this now is also really helping us to focus, to understand where are we putting our focus. Right. I love that. And you got to take that risk and let go of what other people are going to think. Because, you know, Mm -hmm. for example, the Lord may put a dream in a family's heart. Well, I want you to move to Africa, (laughs) you know, or and they're like, oh, no, but retirement and all this kind of stuff. I built this career. I mean. But that's, isn't that the joy of um, knowing the Lord and dreaming in Him is that mm-hmm. uh, fun expectation of, oh, I don't know where He's going to lead me, but I know it's going to be amazing and it's going to be an adventure. Um, how do you speak yeah. on adventure in the dreaming? Oh, man. I mean, I, I love it. I think you don't realize how much you're focused on safety, security, stability until you do start dreaming. Right. I mean, I think it's really easy as people to focus on our to-do list. Mm -hmm. Right. Our budget. Right. On what's happening around us. I mean, if you really start to unpack this, we're really focused on what's going on around us. And so this book is a little bit of a wake up call to go to your point. If life is stopping me from getting in the way of living my dreams, then what is the point of life? Right. Like it's very clear in the Bible that Jesus even tells his disciples, if we are going to pray, we pray like this. You know, our father who is in heaven. Um, your kingdom I can hear come. myself echoing. Yeah. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right. right. I was going to also say the, another version that I love, on earth as it is in heaven. What does that mean? It means it's my part of my responsibility to bring heaven to earth. Right. Amen. Right? But that's hard. But that's really hard. And so part mm-hmm. of this book is really designed to get people to focus on picking the right kind of hard, which is what Jesus' whole life exemplified for us. Right. But sometimes we don't feel like we have the tools to do that, and we have forgotten the call that's on our lives, and we've forgotten the role that we're supposed to be playing. And I believe more than ever before, what our world needs is more people right, waving their hands saying, I will dream. I will dream right. what heaven's dreaming. I will do what heaven's doing. Right. Well, but it's not happening around us. I didn't ask you that. Right. I asked you what's happening in heaven. <laughs> I asked yeah. you what's happening on the dreams that God's giving me on the inside, and can I actually posture myself and position myself every day to build from a place of revelation and not just what I'm seeing with my physical eye? Right, yeah. I love that, you know, and I have a, a testimony myself. Um, uh, I was in radio, uh, and then I went and, and went to Argentina to be a missionary for a year, and I lived and worked in an orphanage. So prior to doing that, that was my dream life. I mean, I believe the Lord put that in there. I still don't know the full reason why he allowed that. I came back and I now I'm in media again. But I remember going prior to living that adventure, living that trust in the Lord, and then going. And it was such a freedom feeling to have just like two suitcases and nothing else. No other material possessions besides two suitcases. You know, I put some stuff in storage. But he built that dream in my heart and I went and I took that leap, then came back and then he revamped my dream to be like, okay, media is the thing I want you to do now. But he does work like that, correct? Have you experienced that too, where this dream at this moment, and then he can he can shift and pivot and say, okay, now I want you to do this dream and whatever it is, whether it's moving across the world, you know, with two suitcases or whatever he calls you to, maybe it's uh, being in, uh, yeah, industry of media, then mm-hmm. that will be your dream. So it's we can't compare our dreams. What I'm tra- I guess I'm trying to get at is we can't compare our dreams to other dreams. To that person, if you put that uh, desire in your heart, it's going to be amazing. Well, and you know, I think where we get really confused is that we think it's about the end goal. We mm. think it's about the destination. Right. That's not what it is for God. God, right. God is after our heart. He right. is after our character, right? And mm-hmm. so when the number one killer of all dreams, right, is disappointment. So when I think that God is going to do it this way, mm-hmm. in this timing, and it doesn't meet my expectations, right. it's easy for me being human to go, 
God didn't hear me or God didn't listen or God. But part of the process, Rachel, that I think is so important is that it's not just about when we get there. It's about how we are going to be able to sustain wherever there is. Right. right? Because what, what God is after is after a character that's going to reflect him. Right. So when I do accomplish my dream, that I have the strength to sustain it. Right. Because right. you and I both know. It's one thing to find Jesus. It's another to stay close to him. Right. It's one to get married. It's another to stay married. Right. It's one to make money. It's another to keep money. Mm-hmm. You know, if you've ever been free of an addiction, it's one thing to get free. It's another to stay free. Yeah. And so I think the journey is there to refine us and define us and to get closer to who God is and what he's after, which is our heart. Right. Amen. You no, know, now that's. Yeah. That's hard along the way. Don't get me wrong, right? When God changes plans or the world doesn't do what I thought it was going to do, believe me, that can be very challenging. Yeah. But I think it's also a good uh, a good point to reflect on because it helps us go after our dreams differently. It's almost like I have a high standard but no expectation. Mm, I love that because the expectation thing, too, can get us, really. And sometimes we want to tell the Lord, give me the five-year plan, <laughs> you know? And it's like, <laughs> no, I told you daily bread. And you're like, oh, man. <laughs> I, know. I know. It's yeah. so good. Yeah. Well, I just want to yeah. um, plug your book and the event that's coming out. So um, Dare to Dream, you could go to um, Julia's website. It's just thejuliagentry.com. And the event that's coming up. So um, you were living in Denver and in Colorado. Colorado, and this event is coming up in January. Um, What's going to be special about this event? Oh, man. So when you go to read the book, here's what I would say to anyone. Please read the book. I wrote the book because the idea was we want to get more people dreaming, but it is a legit read. It is it is not a read before you go to bed. It is not designed to make you feel good. It's really designed to make you be good. Um, that in and of itself can be a lot to do. And as I've done my own dreaming, Rachel, you start to realize that dreaming can be really lonely. You know, yeah. you start to realize our world is not really doing this. And so right. you can feel like you're alone. So we started to create an event that now God has organically opened door after door. Um, so we've done a Dare to Dream event, which is basically taking the book and it's putting it into two days where you will not only experience the things that heaven is doing, but you will find a boldness that you didn't know you didn't have. You will break through some of the limits that have been keeping you for years and years and years. I mean, the testimonies we just got from Florida are unreal. I mean, people who were struggling with fear, worry, doubt, to the point that it was paralyzing them, completely free, totally moving forward on their dreams. I mean, the, the connections that have been made, the emotional healing that has happened, that's what we're bringing to Denver. So we're bringing prophecy, we're bringing music, we're bringing worship, and we're going to bring an actual process for people to break their limits, get clear on their dreams, and to go to town on bringing heaven to earth in Denver, Colorado. I love that. And that's going to be January 13th and 14th. And the church that's being held at, um, where is that going to be, the venue? Bridgeway. Bridgeway Bridgeway. Church in Denver. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. And once again, the Julia Gentry dot com the julia gentry dot com so your dream part of that obviously your book and then speaking so explain mm-hmm. to us because you know a lot of the listeners may think well i'd love to write a book i'd love to go speak um but how mm-hmm. did that process happen for you that the lord said hey this is something i'm gonna um equip you to do oh man probably like anyone you say no yeah, <laughs> yeah. god's like hey i want you no you don't know who i am you don't know what I've done. You, you know, you disqualify yourself the yeah. minute that you feel like it lands. And I did. I ran from this for probably a decade. I, I wish that my story sounded different. I just wrestled with him. I, mm. I had to face all my vulnerability. I had to face a lot of my own past. I had to face a lot of my insecurity. Um, but at some level, you get to a point, Rachel, that you go, I can't not do this. Right. Right. If, if he's going to call me he's the only one that gets to qualify me and and therefore when someone goes how did you do this yeah just like peter i'll say i got out of the boat right. but let me show you the jesus that helped me walk on water right that's that's really where my testimony sits i i love to write but i'm not a quote-unquote writer um you know I, there was so many edits and revisions and the process of becoming and it was crazy it was crazy but i'm so glad i said yes 
right? Because really boldness is just the willingness to say yes right. and to let him lead the rest of the way. Mm-hmm. And so my testimony is simply that. It's just simply saying yes without knowing what the next step was going to be. Oh, I love that. Because a lot of times people, I think, when they don't feel qualified, they don't realize that most people don't feel qualified and they just, like you said, just jumped out of the boat. They just decided, okay, yeah. you know, I'll just take the leap of faith. And so um, mm-hmm. just want to encourage people listening that um, that thing that he's calling you to do, most often you won't feel qualified, but the point is just to start moving, correct? Yeah. yeah. Well, and you, do you know, actually from a business perspective, do you know that the top Fortune 500 companies, the number one fear that those CEOs or CFOs have is that people will find out that they have no idea what they're doing. Mm, that is if so you interesting. Really, if yeah. you really sat with people, I mean, people who will actually doing, quote unquote, incredible things, right? Yeah. Fortune 500 companies, a few of the same things that we do, a mom raising five babies of, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I have no clue. And I think that's the piece that we read time and time again in right. scripture, which is but that gives him room mm. to show off. Right. It Amen. gives God the, the ability for me to go, yes, I learned my skills. I understood my strengths and my weaknesses. I, I needed to learn more about me and why I do what I do and who I am and who God's made me to be. But then I've also leaned in to understand God at a level that I didn't even know I needed. And that's where he gets the glory is that we simply go, look at what he's done in and through my life. Amen. Yeah, because if we could do it on our own, why would we need the Lord? We wouldn't. We yeah. wouldn't need the Lord. Exactly. We wouldn't need the Lord. Exactly. As you, you talk and you speak and you travel the country and the world, um, what are some top things that people um, say to you that has been holding them, holding them back? Well, obviously fear, that would be one of them. Mm-hmm. But there's some other nuggets um, that you've learned and how have you encouraged them with those things? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's the reason I wrote the book. So actually life is getting in the way of me living my dream. Okay. Right? Busyness. So with anything, I'm yeah. busy. I mean, and, and John Bevere says this, if the enemy can't make you bad, he's going to make you busy. Right. <laughs> right. And it is yeah. so true. Like we live in a day and age right now that Instagram, right. I already, I already disqualify myself after being on Instagram. Mm. I disqualify myself when I look at my current calendar. I disqualify myself based upon my past. Like we disqualify ourselves before we ever are willing just to say yes. Right. So I think the biggest thing that I encourage is that the area that you've probably been hit the hardest, right, the one that you keep coming up against that same thing different day Mm -hmm. is absolutely the place that God is probably trying to highlight a testimony and an opportunity. And if we will just surrender to that, Mm -hmm. he can actually show up and show off. Right. But that surrender is hard, Rachel, because, Right. right, I've been probably hurt in that area. I've probably been disappointed in that area. I've, I all of those things, and so I think at some level we have to be so sick and tired of getting what we've always got that right. we're willing that we're willing to trust again. Right. Amen. I love that, and you know I think it's very helpful when people who are in the public eye, um, speakers like yourself, uh, you're an author as well, business owner, mom, um, mm-hmm. that you admit your. Uh, you know, your insecurities and also your failures so that people say, okay, so they're not like on a top pedestal here. They're yeah. just like me. And, and and that's a very humbling place to be too. And I think we should be that way in Christ to encourage others. Cause it's not about like, look at me, look where I've been, look what I've done. It's more like, Hey, I'm just like you, the Lord used me. It's amazing. It's a miracle. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I think that we joke all the time. I have five kids under the age of nine. And wow. so generally when people <laughs> say, you know, I don't have time, I'm like, yeah. me too. <laughs> yeah. right? And it's really never, <laughs> Literally, yeah. if we're honest, it's never a matter yeah. of we don't have enough time. It's where we're putting our time. Exactly. Because we all have the yeah. same amount of time. Yep. And so what I generally will tell people is that you have to make decisions based upon what you want most, not just what you want right now. Because hmm. what I want right now is to avoid, right? I don't want to have that hard conversation, or I don't want to quit my job, or I don't want to actually do a budget, or I don't want to ask for help. Right. But what I want most is to create significance, or to write the book, or to have another baby, right? We look what we want most generally are going to lead us right smack dab into the thing that God has probably called us to do. Right. So at some level, I just can't hide any longer. Right. 
Amen. Amen. Well, this is going to be an amazing event coming to Denver. Can't wait. And I'm going to give the website again. That's thejuliagentry.com. And in Denver, it's going to be January 13th and the 14th. What's some of your um, goals this year? Oh, man, we we want the world to dream. We really do think that we're going into 2023. And generally, I don't make a oh, man, like a huge social push around what do I think is going to happen this year? You know, like you'll hear a lot of big voices saying this year is, except this year. I really, really believe that 2023 is the year of the dream. I think that it is time for us as believers to start making decisions based upon what heaven is doing, to start building from revelation. And I think it, it takes all of us actually having the courage to lean in to tap back into those dreams that God has given us and start making decisions based upon where we're going, not where we are. Because I do think our world is going to change dramatically. Mm -hmm. And if I'm making decisions based upon fear or what I'm seeing or where I was or what last year was, I think we're going to be really discombobulated. And so my year this year is to provide people with the tools and the resources to do their dream really well. Because I think 2023 is the year of the dream. Yes. And so for people who are listening, they're like, oh, man, I would love. Obviously, they can get your book. They can go to this event. But what's something right now that we can give them um, to train them to how to hear the dream? Because a lot of people think, well, I would I, I would love to dream. I don't know what God's telling me my dream is. How do I even know that? Oh, man, that is such a big question, Rachel. Uh, you know, I think I, I think there's oftentimes we think that in the quiet space that we're going to hear something we don't want to hear, right? Or because we're so tuned in to what's going on around us and our busy schedules that we have just forgotten how to get quiet. Right. And so this is not a, this is not a complex answer. It's really simple and it's stupid hard. (laughs) I know I'm saying it is simple, stupid hard. Yeah. Is when was the last time you got quiet and just sat? Mm -hmm. Be still and know Mm -hmm. that I am God. Right. Right. When was the last time I just sat with him and I actually looked at what was most important to me or I looked back at the last point of revelation or that last prophecy or that last place that I was even disappointed and I just stopped Right. and I just shut it down. A lot of times we have to go back to those places and we have to reawaken mm-hmm. that. But a lot, it, it starts in the quiet place. Right. Yeah, and just to know, you know, my pastor is talking about this uh, this past Sunday. Um, oftentimes, we don't want to fully surrender to the Lord because He thinks he, we think that He's going to like ruin our lives, or you're going to make my life so boring if I give you everything. But it's just so much the exact opposite. If we give Him everything, how much more exciting is our life? And He wants to uh, take what He created, which is us as individuals, because He knows us so detailed and he he created us so detailed that only he can really once we surrender can he really then um give us those dreams that we are created for so what i'm trying to say here is listeners once we completely surrender and trust him and get in that quiet time and realize that he's not gonna make our lives like you know fuddy duddy or whatever some of those lies the enemy can tell us Um, is when then he can show us what he created us for. And what he created us for is the exact thing that we all want to do. Well, you know, even if you look at Proverbs 25, 2, it says that it is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings is to search it out. What does that mean? What it means that, again, God is not after the destination. He's after you. Mm. He wants intimacy with you. And so I believe a lot of times we think of dreams as all of this external facing things, more money, more time, Mm. more houses, more stuff, more impact, more significance, more stuff. Right. And I'm not suggesting that those aren't bad, right? We all want to grow and achieve and do these things. But the, the amount that we're able to grow externally, I believe, is totally congruent with the amount of depth that I'm willing to grow internally yeah. in my walk with the Lord. I right? love this that. This is why yeah. we see all the time, Rachel, someone who makes a million dollars and then all of a sudden a year later loses it, right? Or right. someone who, who, who can grow externally, but then what happens is that we have this internal barometer that says, I can only grow as much as my narrative internally allows me to. Right. So if I don't feel worthy, if I don't feel accepted, if I don't feel like there's enough, if I don't feel like God has my back, if I don't feel like these things, then as my world starts to shift and change, 
I'll quote unquote self sabotage it right. to be in alignment with what I'm thinking internally. Why I point out that scripture is because I think what's important in your dreaming process is that God is not hiding anything. He is right. not concealing anything, right? And in fact, if we can't understand his mystery, then we'll never understand his revelation. Mm-hmm. So part of this is about building a relationship with God, with our God of the universe, and then also developing relationships with ourselves. Mm-hmm. Earlier, your point, we are comparing ourselves so much with everybody else and who everybody thinks we should be right. that we've forgotten who we want to be. Right. And so that quiet place can be a little bit nerve-wracking because we start to realize, man, I've gotten far away yeah. from my intimate walk with God and myself. Right. And so that starting at that place is so important. Yeah. And I love that because, um, you know, when you were talking, you pointed out, okay, so yes, oftentimes as humans, we can think of, oh, the big dream, whatever that may be, right? Um, the big house mm-hmm. or the big job or, the, you know. Uh, being in the spotlight or whatever. But on what you're saying is really the real dream in Christ is our intimacy with him, no matter where he leads us. That's our big dream is the intimacy Mm -hmm. with Christ. Then he, then he can lead us. He can lead us to the big house, but he might, he might lead you to be a missionary. He might lead you. We can't compare to others, whatever it is that he wants to dream in us with that intimacy. It's first that's the dream. Jesus is the dream. Yeah. From there, whatever it is he's calling us to do, whether move to a different country or whatever, or be, you know, fabulous in the business world, then that will be where we'll find our completeness in him. And like we said before, he can change it up. Like for me, it was a missionary and now I'm back in media. So mm-hmm. just to let go of the expectations and just be willing to dream with the creator of the universe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and in my experience, you know, Rachel, I don't think God is a weird God and that he's going to ask us to do something that we're not wired to do. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah. he had a plan, and then he wrapped us around it, yeah. and we became his dream. We became a part of this whole journey, right? He didn't have to have us, but he gets to co-labor right. with us to yep. see his kingdom come. And so I really think that, like, it's an invitation for us to unlearn everything we think we know about God so we can actually know God. Right. And same thing, right? If we need to unlearn stuff about ourselves that isn't actually a part of who we are. They're just learned behaviors or learned traits. And so I think the journey, really, I mean, that's what it is. It is a journey. Right. It is a journey. Right. Yes. And that daily bread in Christ, that's the real thing right there. I love that. I can, can I could talk forever with you about this. <laughs> And we're going to um, give the event again. The website, listeners, is thejuliagentry.com. It's January 13th and 14th in Denver, and you can get tickets online. And thanks, Julia, for coming on Corner Cafe and inspiring us in this new year to dream with Jesus. Who is God to you? Who is God to us? Is he boring, old, irrelevant? Is he real? Is he powerful? We tell ourselves, God is nothing more than words on a page. His power isn't real. He's small, weak, and insignificant. He doesn't understand my daily struggle. To us, he's absent, lifeless, dead. Is this truly God's character? Is he weak? Is he absent? Does God still exist? Is he real? God is more. He is more than a line or a passage. His power is not confined to words penned by man. It's real. From his mouth, the universe came to be. He is more than talk. He is action. He is by our side. He understands our pain, our struggle. Mere words cannot describe the warmth of his embrace or the shelter that he brings. He is more. When Jesus walked the earth 2,000 years ago, he had some pretty revolutionary ideas. Looking back on it, it's easy to side with him now. But if you'd been there... Would you have been such a supporter? Things that make you go, hmm, your Crawford Broadcasting Company, God and Country Station. And welcome back to Corner Cafe. I am Rachel Maines, and I truly enjoyed my interview with Julia Gentry, inspiring us to dream big this new year. And I hope you can get tickets. I know it's going to be a fantastic event. Go to her website, thejuliagentry.com. And for the rest of the show, we're going to leave you with some music, and in particular, music that inspires us to dream big. Until next time, have a great rest of your weekend, and see you at the cafe 
next week.
See? 